Hey, well, good morning, Catalina Fiddles Church. It's Pastor John Stone here with our Tuesday morning devotion. We're working through the Psalms, and we're in Psalm 12. And in Psalm 12, David writes, Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say, by our tongues we will prevail, our own lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? Because the poor are plundered and the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will, will protect us for, from ever from the wicked will f who freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race. So I, I think, oh, sorry about that. I just kicked our stand here. But So I think what's interesting about this passage, I mean, for us, for me, is that when I read these first two um, verses, help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. And then in verse 7 and 8, um, who will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked who freely strut about when what is vile is, is honored by the human race? You know, it's easy to think that as we see our culture changing and the world changing around us, when the values that have been in our culture, values of um, about sexuality, about identity, uh, about pol uh, I'm sorry, about justice, about mercy, about forgiveness, uh, when we've thought a certain way about law enforcement and law, and that we see that almost it feels like entirely washed away. It's easy to think what's happened, what's changed, and certainly something's changed. Sorry, my. I'm knocking my trash can over. I'm knocking this over. It's easy for us to think um, something has fundamentally changed. And, and it, it has, and it, it happens in your lifetime. Uh, we see men saying they're women. We see women saying they're men. Uh, we see politicians who seem to, to enjoy lying to us. And I'm not thinking about any particular politicians. It just feels like at times like, you can't trust what a leader says sometimes. And we see people espousing ideas that are very, very different than the ideas that were in our culture 20 years ago, 15 years ago. In, in terms of sexual identity, 10 years ago. And it's easy to think, good night, what am I to do? I mean, is everything lost? I think it's worth recognizing that David felt the same way we feel. David felt like something had been fundamentally, fundamentally lost in his culture. And every generation of Christians feels that way. And they actually could be right. It could be true. But they feel like no one is faithful anymore. The loyal have vanished from the human race. I mean, it's a powerful statement. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips. The evil freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race. So it's easy for us to think this has just fallen on us, and it's worth noticing that it's fallen on every Christian. David, King David, the writer of the psalm, felt this. He's leading Israel, who has their own country, God, the temple is functioning. At this point, they've not been invaded and taken over by foreigners, and he simply feels this way. And this is something we're always going to feel. And I think there's a part of us that wishes we didn't have to feel it or see it. But there are always people coming hard into the kingdom, and there are always people running hard away from the kingdom, individually, personally, and then even corporately and nationally, and even internationally with countries and leaders. But what's interesting about this psalm, and I really encourage you to read it several times a day, is he says things like, the Lord will silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. 
He will silence those who are bragging. He says, the poor are plundered, the needy groan, and the Lord will arise. I will protect them who malign them. And then he says something that's worth us noticing. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. He reminds us of something that's true, and it can feel big right now, but it's always been true, and that is the only thing you and I can trust is not even us. It's God's Word. This language of what the Scriptures are, silver purified in a crucible, and gold refined seven times, the purest gold, that what we have to trust in is God's Word. And it may be asking us to endure, to be patient, to love very hard people. But the only thing we can trust in a world that feels upside down is God's Word. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. Why should you have hope today when what is going on around you in your life feels hopeless? Because God's Word is true. Hey, good to be with you this morning. Went a little bit longer, but I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, throughout the week or sometime. You have a great week.